This is bread. This is bacon. Now this is lettuce. Now if I were to pause this and look at you and ask you what comes next, you'd probably use the powers of Great Karnak to say tomato. Um, you would be correct, uh, not because you're super powerful, but because it's a sandwich called a BLT, but you probably already knew that and you want to know why? Three, two, one. It's because of this, your brain. Your brain likes things that come in threes. Let's call it the rule of threes for the sake of this conversation. It's the same reason that as a game player, if I give you this screen, say go, you'd probably put fingerprints all over your monitor trying to arrange these things in a pleasing shape that looks something like this. Um, that's because your brain likes this pattern and also because as a game player, you're conditioned that when you see this, probably something goes boom. Um, but this isn't really about the sandwich. It's mm -hmm. not even really about the three sandwiches, uh, but it kind of is why your brain likes stuff in threes. Now, omnitrium perfectum is a Latin term, meaning everything that comes in threes is perfect, and it's pretty appropriate because we're surrounded by threes. In fact, the way that we're built is based on threes. If you take your body and you could somehow take a look at an atom, you'd see that it was made up of a proton, a neutron, an electron, or maybe a series of those things. Um, also, in the stories that we've told and have continued to tell about the three little pigs huffing and puffing and blowing the house down, and even the games that we play, rock, paper, scissors, anyone, um, since the dawn of time, humans have been matching threes all over the place. Here's a great example that's kind of in a desert somewhere outside of Egypt, or maybe that's in Egypt. Um, and unless you're watching late night TV and this guy tells you it was aliens, we actually know it was humans and there are three burial chambers in the giant pyramid. Um, that's just one example. There's the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. They traveled as a three. Um, and then there's also Isaac Newton watching Apple fall and saying, well, you know, I don't think there's one, uh, not even two, but there's probably three laws of motion that controlled that. Uh, he was English. You can tell that because of the three gold and uh, lions on a shield. He wasn't French, you can tell, because he didn't have the three Florida leases on his shield. And even though these countries never really got along, um, when you combine them, you actually get the three primary colors. Uh, enough about that, what about the games? Well, in ancient Rome, they actually played a version of this game. It was called Turning Lapilli. Um, we're not exactly sure what the board looked like, but we think it kind of looked like this. And I'm going to use these shapes. Oh, I'll even simplify them a little bit more. Let's call it an X and an O. And the objective of this was to get three things in a row and then draw a clever little line through it, indicating that you have, in fact, uh, you know, vanquished your opponent. Um, we'll call that tic-tac-toe, and you've been matching three a lot longer than you thought. Uh, now, all types of games were actually played in Rome. This is Brutus and Caesar playing a little game that I like to call the Ides of Match. Um, ha, ha, ha. So in the 13th century, Europeans played a game called Three Men's Morris, and the objective was you had three white stones, I had three green stones, and my, you know, I had to get those three in a row, so I matched three there. And then in 1600 something, a group of professors left England to go to Harvard, and they took with them the idea of a match three, and professors actually, and students loved this. The students said, oh, look, a new game, and the professor said, great, there's, a fewer, there's fewer students yelling toga and getting three shits to the wind drunk. Now, in 1700-something, a guy named Ben Franklin was matching three in college. Uh, a little bit later, he was part of a group that wrote a document that started with these three words. Um, and it also promised these three things to people who lived in the USA. Uh, that's a coincidence? Maybe not. Now, Match 3, after the War of Independence, kind of covered the country. Why not? It's easy to play. Lots of people can understand it. And in the 1952, the first electronic version of Knots and Crosses was made. Um, it was actually made on a giant computer called an EDSAC. And judging by this picture, it was a uh, giant indeed. Now, not to be outdone, in 1975, MIT said, we see what you did with your computer. We're going to create a version of Tic-Tac-Toe that runs on a computer made of Tinker Toys. Um, I thought that was neat, and because I think something else is neat, I'll tell you at the same time, uh, in the United States, there was a group of people trying to make a box that you could actually put in your living room and play a version of Match 3 or Tic-Tac-Toe, and the name of this company was the same as the Japanese verb for check and go, uh, Atari. Yes, you guessed it. So in 1985, this game showed up, and while it's technically not a Match 3, it did circle the earth and made people see these shapes while they were sleeping. Uh, now in 1989, something actually really big happened, well, more like tiny, and now you could play the Tetris on a little thing called the Nintendo Game Boy, um, and you know where you took it, don't act so surprised. Uh, throughout the 90s, people kept continuing to kind of refine the idea, Dr. Mario and Colin are two of my favorite examples. And in 1996, this game appeared, in Japan it's called Panel de Pawn, and in the United States it was called Tetris Attack, and it did, it did two things that I absolutely just love. Um, the first was these little brackets here, when you push the button it would actually shift shapes to different sides, so you've actually matched two rows of three at the same time, and it also had a really cool multi multiplayer experience. Now, this actually blew everybody's mind, and then throughout the late 90s, we saw some more iteration through Puzzle Fighter and Bubble Ball and all sorts of cool things. 
Now in 2001, PopCap took Bejeweled and they said, well, we like what Tetris Attack did with this swapping thing. We're also going to add pieces that fall from the top. And it was officially kind of the birth of the modern era of the Match 3. At last count, there's probably like a bajillion different gems you can match or jellies or candies or veggies or gummies or animals. And so you have a bajillion choices when you play, but at least you know that not only do you enjoy matching shapes, but so does your brain.